Are you ready to receive a word from the Lord today that will change your life forever? Amen? <laughs> Preach it. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Let's try that one more time. Did you all come ready to receive a word from God that will change your life, not just for today, but forever? Amen? How many of you all know, really, one word from God changes everything when you receive it, right? Just like one touch from God, one touch from the master Jesus changes everything. You know, if we could ask that woman with the issue of blood out of the word, when she touched the hem of his garment, she was immediately healed and restored. Amen? So today, you know, if that's you, one touch from Jesus, one word you hear today is enough to set you up on that high place, to bring you out from under to above, from not healed to totally whole. Amen? So receive that today is the day of your miracle. You know, the Bible tells us in Psalm uh, 84, verse 11, that the Lord God is a sun and a shield. He bestows on us his grace and his favor, and his glory, which is his presence. And no good thing, no good thing does he withhold from those that walk uprightly. That's where you say, that's me. I receive all of the goodness of God operating in my life, in every area, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? So today is the day of your miracle, church. It's you just believe and receive it. Yes. Amen? I even believe that miracles are breaking out while we're talking right now. Changes are happening. Situations are being rearranged. What was trying to steal your joy steals it no more. When you just say, ha, 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 devil, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I go from victory to victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, a lot of great things are happening at the House of New Life, and we're glad that you all are here. Facebook Live family, we're glad that you're here too. We believe that God has a word just for you today. So stay tuned for the entire message, right? Revelation yes. from heaven flowing in this house today. Also, David Wilkinson is coming on September 23rd and 24th, mm-hmm. which is, yes, that's a woo for sure. It'll be good. It's a Sunday morning at 1030, Sunday night at 6, and Monday night at 630. Um, this man, if you've not heard him, he's a Rama graduate. He's also the... Um, He's pastored a church. His picture's right up on the screen behind me, <laughs> right? <laughs> he is a strong teacher of the word with demonstrations of the Holy Spirit following. And, you know, the bottom line is he is a ghostwriter for Joyce Meyer Ministries. And maybe you all heard Joyce Meyer before, right? Okay. So when you read her books, you can say, wow, this man had a hand in this book. Yeah. And Gloria Copeland and so on. So come and receive what God has for you. Yes. you know, we, we do our best to only bring in those that we know that God is speaking through yes. for you. So you don't want to miss. You don't want to take those opportunities and be asleep at the wheel. You want to be right here ready to receive all that God has just for you. You know, and bring somebody with you too, right? Let's yes. pack out the house and enjoy this time we have coming up. Yeah, With that, let's welcome our pastor as he comes today. Thank you, Matt. Praise God. Well, welcome, everybody. We're so glad to have you here. And I believe God has something really good for you today. And I, I, I prayed years ago, and I was just talking to the Lord, and I said, I want to pastor a smart church. And he said, well, teach them. So if I teach, how many of you will listen? All right, be a hearer and a doer of the word. The Bible says you'll be blessed. Hallelujah. Jimmy, it's good to see you here. I'm glad you brought Heather. We've been trying. We've been trying. <laughs> and it's good to see my friend Jack and Marty here. And uh, Marty's moving. Yeah. Minnesota. Yeah. Hallelujah. Marty's a great fisherman. So he likes to fish. I don't know how many of you like to fish. Tim, yeah, <clears throat> but it's good to have all of you here, and we're so thankful for you. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn to the book of Acts, chapter 28. Annette mentioned about David uh, coming in this month, already September. Actually, we're going to have communion today. I was about to get ahead of myself. I do that a lot. That's why I have a wife. 
<laughs> Good wife. Yeah. I learned the other half of Proverbs 18, 21, you know, 22. Not the other half, but verse 22. He that finds a wife finds a good thing, obtains favor of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We invite you to partake of communion with us. <clears throat> Communion's when we come together to observe our connection to the Lord Jesus Christ and also our connection to each other, the communion of the saints, the communion of the Lord's table. The Apostle Paul talks to the Corinthian church. Verse 23, he said, For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Let me stop right there. And one of the reasons the Apostle Paul comes to the Corinthian church to minister this, he's actually teaching and ministering this. It's, it's wrote down as a letter. It's been read for over 2,000 or, or about 2,000 years now. But he wanted to have communion with the Corinthian church so they would understand they don't have to be weak and sickly. They had been struggling with some of these things. And in uh, chapter 2, it talks about how the, he said many among you are still carnal, carnal, and as babes. Some us, and to be carnal is to live like the world, still have sin in their life. But he's, and he said you act like Christian babies. He said, but I, I come to you now. He brings them to the communion table and helps them understand when we partake of the Lord Jesus, we don't have to be weak and sickly. When we partake of His body. When we partake of the Lord's body, we don't have to be weak and sickly anymore. And when we partake of His body, we understand our part as the body of Christ. As the body of Christ. We don't do that just in church. We do that in our homes. It's my job to be a good husband. It's not my wife's job to be a good husband. It's my job to be a good husband. It's my job to be a good citizen. It's my job to be a good dad. It's not my children's job just to be good children. It's my job to be a good dad. It's my job to be a good husband. It's my job to be a good citizen. And, and as a good citizen, it's my job to take part of what uh, Isaiah prophesied, and the government shall be upon their shoulders. A lot of people take that to say that the government will be upon Jesus' shoulders. Jesus is the head. We are the body, right? The shoulders are part of the body. That means we get involved in what's going on, uh, especially in the area of politics. Register to vote. Register to vote. And vote right. Vote right. We vote for life. We vote for our Constitution. Our country was built on the Constitution. We vote, we vote for that. We vote to have freedom of speech. That means even if, even if somebody talks the way I don't like, they have that freedom. They espouse something I don't believe in. They have that freedom and they have that right. And when they exercise that right, I have the right to exercise my right. And so we, we have rights as citizens. And the government is, uh, Greg, gets on my shoulders as a pastor. I, I'm, I'm a conservative. I'm a Republican. I voted for Trump, for President Trump. I esteem him an honor. I said, well, some of the things he's done. Listen. 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 I didn't vote for him because he's sweet and nice. I voted for him to be president of the strongest country in the world. I voted, I voted for somebody that had the intestinal fortitude to stand against things that would erode our country. See, I, 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 told, I told Natalie the other day, I, said, I was for him from day one. You got you to gotta have some stuff to be president in this country. I, I helped, uh, I was county campaign, county campaign chairman for Newt Gingrich a few years ago. Not that that looks great on my resume or anything, but I got to meet the man. I got to meet the man. He was such a nice man. He was such a kind man. He got ran over so fast. 
You know, we've got, we've got soldiers. We've got people in the military. Do you want nice people protecting you? Or you do, do you want the one that's been trained like a junkyard dog? Huh? Amen. I had a dog one time, and we were boarding some horses one place, and there was this a very unsavory character would come around and, and, and bother people. And this blue healer I had at the time, he had a set of teeth on him. <clears throat> and I was out on the other side of the area, and I, and I heard I heard this guy yell and, and cuss at the dog. And he come around and said, your dog bit me. I said, I like that dog better all the time. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't want a guard dog that runs away. You want one that protects. I believe that's what we have in our country. Yes. Trying to look over things, protect things. And anyway, that Paul is having communion and talking to the Corinthian church. He said this about Jesus. This is my body. Jesus gave his body so we as the church body could be what we need to be. Without Jesus, I can't be a good husband. There's some stuff in me I have to make line up to the Word of God. I wasn't always this sweet. Don't say nothing. There's things in the Word of God that, that keep me centered, keep me focused, keep me in control, keep me in line, keep, me, keep talking to me. The Word of God talks to me. That's why I have to... David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart, O God, that I might not sin against Thee. So, and, and, and while I'm on that, it's like when I say it's my job to be a good husband, as, as a Christian, it's my job to be a good, good husband. Why? Because if I'm a good husband, then I reflect Christ in His church. Now, Jesus loved the church. Amen. Why is it getting, getting real quiet in here? <clears throat> and, okay, I won't talk about marriage anymore. Oh, people started smiling again. Okay. <clears throat> mm, really opened the door for some more sermons coming up, though. Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. When we partake, when we partake of this, this wafer and this cup, we're saying, I want to be like Jesus. And every time I partake of the Lord's table, I receive strength. We were talking in prayer today earlier. We should eat for fuel and not for fun. And when we eat the Lord's table, partake of the Lord's table, we receive fuel for the journey. Fuel for life. In the name of Jesus. And after the same manner, he, he takes the cup. This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he comes. Every time we have communion, I'm saying, I believe Jesus died for me. I believe his blood covers my sins. Through the stripes on his back, I am healed. I believe in his death. I do show forth his death till he comes. That means I also believe in the power of the resurrection. A dead Jesus isn't coming back. A live Jesus is coming back. A living Jesus is coming back. I'm not stuck at the cross. I'm not stuck at the empty tomb. I'm not stuck looking up into heaven, just looking and gazing into some faraway land. I am employed for the master. Hallelujah. We come here today to do work. Hallelujah. We come here today, uh, An Angie was singing uh, <clears throat> about the enemy and us defeating him, we don't come here today just to let the enemy know uh, that we're winning. We come to let him know he lost through Jesus Christ. 
So we come to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. All right, if you would serve everyone. Father, we thank you in Jesus' great name. Thank you for grace that is sufficient. Thank you for grace that can solve any problem. Any problem you have, there is an answer in the Word of God and power through the Holy Ghost and grace to get the message to you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, we give you praise and glory. Father, we thank you in Jesus' great name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for forgiveness for those that have been forgiven and those that are about to receive forgiveness. Thank you for healing for those that are healed and have received their healing and for those that are about to receive their healing. Thank you, Lord, that wisdom comes in today and displaces the ignorance and darkness of not knowing. Thank you, Father, that we come today to walk in the wisdom of God, that we might walk in victory every day of our life in the powerful name of Jesus. Now, let's hold up the wafer, if you would. And, Lord, we ask now, bless the wafer, which represents your body. In Jesus' name. Now the cup, Father, we thank you for this cup which represents the blood of Jesus. Thank you that we receive the blood shed for our sins. Thank you for the blood that gives us victory over sin, hell, and the grave. And a victorious life. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Let us partake. And everyone say amen. amen. Glory to God. Our ushers, if you'll pass the cup to the center aisle, our ushers will receive that. Glory, 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 glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Tommy, did you bring all these people with you today? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 28. We've been going through the book of Acts and covering <clears throat> some of the High points. Well, I'm still getting ahead of myself. I'm so ready to preach, I can't stand it. Let's, re <laughs> let's receive tithe and offering today. Hallelujah. Wow. Amen. Not, I've, been, I've been wound up about tithe and offering. Malachi chapter 3 <clears throat> says, Bring all the tithe, chap chapter 3 verse 10, Breathe all the, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. That's, the, that's our church now. It's the storehouse. That there may be meat or substance or sustenance to fulfill ministry. And prove me now herewith. Word prove is the same as test. Saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. The, the Lord of hosts and two or three translations says, God of the angel armies. Not just God of your angel, but God of the angel armies. Armies who do conquest and enter battle on your behalf. A lot of times we say, well, I won a victory. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <clears throat> I 
I had that happen to me. when I was sitting on the front row at a KCM convention in Fort Worth. I thought, God, I will break this phone if it doesn't <laughs> shut off. <laughs> and I was ready to take it out and just, you know. Do the... We think sometimes we win the victory. We don't see behind the scene there were armies of God on our behalf. Father, I open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you shall not be able to receive. I wanted to read something on my phone and you got me nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> We believe and we sow toward forgotten dreams that are being recovered. Tithing helps us move towards God as he moves toward us. And when I hold my tithe up, that's my game changer. When we hold our tithe up, we say, that's, that's my game changer. When, when I hold my tithe up, that qualifies me for Malachi 3.10. It qualifies me. It qualifies me to stand under heaven's windows as God opens them. That qualifies me. See, Pastor, I'm really needing some financial help. When's your last tithe check? Pastor, I really need a, I need a financial breakthrough. It could be as simple as tithing. Mm. Pastor, I'm believing for this dream, this vision I've got of my future. It could be realized in as simple an act as sowing a seed. I really believe that. Done that, lived that. Walk in that, live by that. I live by my sowing, by our sowing, our giving. I married a tither and a sower and a giver. So this qualifies me. I got to thinking about that. A lot of times people, people it's like they, they just... Toss it in like, well, okay, I'm just going to give something. I'm just going to throw something. I'm going to take it back out there because I'm, I'm not done. <laughs> but just toss it in. I, I really believe with all of my heart that when we, when we tithe, when we give, when we sow, that I, I release something from my humanity to the deity of God. I release something from earth and it's now in the realm of heaven to take care of it. Our Father which art in heaven, we pray. Teach us how to pray, Lord. Pray after this manner. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, that's what the Word says. So Father, today this group of tithers and givers and sowers. I ask you for every one of them to be able to stand under heaven's windows of opportunity. In the mighty powerful name of Jesus for every dream that has been just on hold through a seed or an act of obedience in giving Make the dream a reality in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to stop there. Hold it right there. I, this year, this year, we've saw people go into homes, 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 
cars. Uh, oh, no more. Debt free. Getting letters that says you owe no more. This is paid. Paid in full. Debt canceled. Financial blessings and miracles. All kinds of all kinds of financial blessings. They were standing under heaven's windows. Now, Father, we thank you for getting in on that. Thank you for the wisdom to hear a word and act on a word. And we'll give you the praise and the thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You may go and be an open window of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I supposed to do anything else before I, I preach? Let me just ask for help here. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the word of God. I, I've just been so blessed by studying uh, the Apostle Paul and, and his journey toward Rome. I said, man, that must have been exciting. You must be crazy. He embarked on one of the greatest maritime or seagoing journeys in all of history. Shipwrecked, survives. Snake bit, survives. They stayed there three months after the snake bite incident. And now in verse 15, <clears throat> after they... They had stopped at one other place for seven days, and now in verse 15, uh, and from there the brethren heard of us, and they came to meet us as far as, Ap as Appi Forum and the three taverns. These places are about 33 miles from Rome. He's still on the way to Rome. And the people heard, that, the Christians heard that he was coming, and uh, <clears throat> they came out to meet them and to hear a word from the Lord. And he was encouraged, and he thanked God. He's still a prisoner. He's still a prisoner. And now they go to Rome, and they get to Rome, and he has appealed to Caesar. And verse 16, we come to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. He was able to rent a place and still had a guard with him. These guards were chained uh, they were chained together. There was a guard change four times a day. And it was not uh, just any guard. It was the Praetorian Guard of Rome. There were 10,000, approximately 10,000, literally special forces soldiers in the Praetorian Guard. Leaders sought their opinion. They made double the pay as an ordinary soldier. And Paul was chained to one of these guards four times a day, four shift changes a day. The Jewish people loved him and some hated him. Everybody's not going to like you. Turn to your neighbors. I don't know why, but everybody's not going to like me. Turn to somebody else and say, they're just not ready for me yet. <laughs> yeah. just, just, you can just say it out loud. Everybody can't be me. <laughs> You've got to be who you are. <clears throat> but in, in, just as a sidebar, everybody in this soldier group, word started to get out that Paul's an okay guy. And, he's, and they're chained to him. But people can come to Paul and he teaches from daylight to dark 30 every day. 365 days a year times two. He was there for two years. And these guards, historians say, his value went up among the guards and the people at Rome as they saw his manner of life. 
while he was there, while he was a captive, this is where he wants to go. I must go to Rome. Shipwrecked, I must go to Rome. Fourteen days in a storm, I must go to Rome. They had aid for two weeks, I must go to Rome. The angel of the Lord said, you'll be spared, but the ship's going to be lost. How encouraging that must have been. <laughs> We're in a storm. We're in a storm, the storm of all storms. And an angel of God, be of good cheer. You're going to make it. The ship's not going to make it, but you're going to make it. You could see somebody's lightning quick mind going to work with that. Mm, possibly they'd heard of Jonah. They're looking for dorsal fins. They just got a new movie out called The Meg. You wouldn't see that, did you? <laughs> First time I saw Jaws, I didn't even want to get in the tub after that. I was in Indonesia, I saw, I saw a, a shark's tooth big as my hand in a, in a jewelry store. But the ship was sinking, it was falling apart, but they made it. He gets out, they land, build a fire, snake bites him. The villagers say oh, he's, it's a poisonous viper, he's going to die. The gods are getting even with him, wreaking justice on Paul. But he survives that, now he's a good guy, but... He gets to Rome. That's where he wanted to go because he had to go to Rome. And people come to visit him every day for two years. Every change of the guard heard the word of God. Everybody that came to hear him was encouraged with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, Pastor, I'm going through something. We, we have become... And I want to encourage you that we want to get out of that and go beyond that. We have become a, a, a people that are always going through something. And let me, please hear my heart. We need to be a people that have gone beyond something and are going to something. We're not going from defeat to defeat, but we are going from a basis of victory to victory because... Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And, and, and so I, I see this in the Apostle Paul. He said, what could he do? He must have been discouraged. Listen, he wrote the book of Ephesians. He wrote the book of Philippians. He wrote the book of Colossians. And the small chapter of Philemon while he was in prison. And debated... For the cause of Christ. He, he debated and taught those things about the kingdom of God and of who Jesus was with joy. He, he wrote things like an ambassador in bonds. I, Paul, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. I am his prisoner. He wrote to the saints in Caesar's household. He wrote of the things of the eternal God and how to live this life. Ephesians 4.1, Our Paul, therefore the prisoner of the Lord, I, I beseech you, brethren. I beseech you. He, we, we need to get to the place that wherever we're at, we are gods. And we're walking in victory. We're living in a place of victory. We're living for the Lord Jesus. I see these, I see these things here. And, and the word, on his journey... The, the Greek word <clears throat> prokopen, P-R-O-K-O-P-E-N. It's the word for progress. You see, Pastor, I'm not perfect. Don't say that anymore. Are you making progress? If you're here, you mu you're making progress. Some of you used to attend bedside assembly quite regularly. But here you're here. You're here. Hallelujah. We're glad you're here. Turn to your neighbors. I'm glad you're here. You make up an important part of the body of Christ. I'm so glad you're here. Praise God. 
But this word pro, breaking it down, the word pro means forward. And copen means to cut. And it is used to describe a pioneer cutting through thick brush. Sometimes in your Christianity, you're going to have to be going forward and your momentum will not be slowed down, hindered, or hampered because of thick brush. But you will go through it. If it's the storm, we go through the valley of the shadow of death. Yea, do I walk through. I didn't stop and buy real estate and buy a camper to stay in the valley of the shadow of death. I'm going through it. I went to a, a, a KCM convention in uh, New Jersey. I uh, can't even think of the, the... Not Camden. Newark. Newark, New Jersey. Newark, New Jersey. And after the service, which they all go long. You know, Brother Copeland, people say, well, you spent a lot of time taking up the offering. You haven't been to a service with a long offering until you've heard Brother Kenneth Copeland. 45 minutes. That's, that's usually a minimum. But anyway, the service went long, and it was a great service, and, and I was there by myself. And so after the service, you know, I walked over to the hotel, and I thought, there's a little mall over here. I'll walk over there and, and get something to eat because I'm, I'm inclined to eat, and especially when I'm bored. And uh, so I, I was seeking a hamburger place, and so I go in this nice, nice place, get a hamburger, and it's about midnight, and I'm going, I'm going back to my hotel. I'm, I'm making progress. I'm going back to my hotel. And uh, so I'm going back, and I make a wrong turn. And I go through a parking garage at midnight in Newark, New Jersey, home of the mafia and gangs. And I'm in a parking garage, underground kind of thing, in Newark, New Jersey at midnight. And you talk about making progress, I thought, praise God. I'm a child of God, and the angels of God watch over me. I said, protecting angel, let's go. <laughs> I put her in high gear. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I'm not afraid, but I'm not a fool either. It's like, hey. Amen. It's a time to make progress. Yes. Hallelujah. You need to learn how to, you need to learn how to cut through some thick brush in your life. He had to cut through some things when he was on the ship that enabled him to hear the angel of God come and say, Paul, be of good cheer. He was able to stand up and say, the angel of the Lord stood by me tonight and said, we are going to be saved. He was making progress in, in the face of obvious defeat. A snake bit him on the hand that was poisonous and he was able to cut through some thick brush and say, I've got a job to do. And he shook the snake off and continued to preach the gospel and the people fell in love with him. And the Bible says at the end of three months, they supplied him with all that he needed for the rest of his journey. Listen, what the devil intends to take you under with God has his provision hid in that problem. God has his provision hidden in that trouble area. God has victory hidden for you in the most unlikely place, coming out of a brush, latching onto your hand. Others think you're going to die, but in reality, God is going to meet all of your need. That's progress. Don't be one of those that says, I'm making progress. But somebody talked about me. So what? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't true. So what if it was true? People spend too much time trying to defend themselves against something that requires no defense. 
I had someone come to me one time and they said, well, I, I, I'd, heard, I, I'd heard some stuff about you. I just looked at him. I said, it's all true. <laughs> oh, I've cut it off. At the, I just cut it off at the pass. I said, it's all true. <laughs> Literally turned pale, drifted out of my office. I wanted to go, next. Just, you need to have something rise up on the inside of you. Some little thing comes up against you. You don't break stride. You cut through the thick brush in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Pastor, there's something on the job that's going on. You're going on. If you're a light in the dark place, you're the one going on. That's what's happened. You walked in and God flicked on the light. Darkness doesn't like light. I remember Jesse Duplantis telling about Christine Kane and her daughter. They were shopping. I don't know if it was Walmart or somewhere. Uh, they were in a shopping store, and, and her little girl, they were looking at flashlights and stuff like that, and she was explaining to her daughter what it was. And she said, you know, it flick it on and off. She said, what's that for? And she said, well, that's when you turn it on, the darkness has to go away. And her little girl said, Mommy, let's go find some darkness to shine the light on. Come on, somebody. Can we be the people that progress in this day and in this generation with things going around us that you may not like or you may not want to be a part of and you may not be able to fully understand? I want to tell you right now, I don't fully understand how God answers my prayer but if I get the check, I can cash it. And I want to say, that's all I need to know. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you're the one that gets healed, are you going to be the one that gets on the internet and tries to find out why it won't work? I want to tell you, if you're trying to get healed, stay off the internet. Come on. You get a... You'll find out everything in the world why it won't work. When I was in Indonesia, I, I met a few different people, and there's five different levels there. The laborers can't ever marry somebody in management. Management can't ever marry or be a part of or fellowship with anyone in business. And it just goes on and up until the, the uber-wealthy people. That's what the devil wants you to say. You're down here. You can't ever be up here. You're here, but you can't ever go that high. You made a little progress, but you can't ever make great progress. I want to tell you, we serve the God of the angel armies that opens heaven's windows. And if we will just learn to walk in miracles, uh, 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 let me change that. If we can learn to walk in wisdom, we'll make decisions that will look like miracles. And you'll start walking in wisdom, and you'll start walking in knowledge. I remember praying years ago. Uh, this, this was back in the 90s, and I said, you know, the Bible says, Jesus said, the poor you have always. Jesus said, the poor are going to be with you always. That's one of the first things the anointing came on Jesus for in Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Isaiah is talking about it, but Jesus quotes the prophet Isaiah in the book of Luke, chapter 4, and verse 18. He said, For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So I stopped. I said, Lord, why, why are the poor going to always be here? And he said, They won't learn. you want to go higher than you are now, you want to go from a better job than what you have now, you're going to have to learn something different. Amen. If you want to go to the next level, this level info won't work at that level. If you want to walk in greater glory, you've got to pursue something you're not doing now. Amen. Hallelujah. 
See, Pat, I, I don't understand that. If, <clears throat> if I want to be a great husband, I can't be content with being a good husband. See, I always get those amens from my wife when I say stuff like that. <clears throat> but see, if, if, you want, if you want to be a better person, you can't be content with being a good person. You've got to just want to be better. You've got to want to be better for yourself. The Apostle Paul, he, he, he knew, he knew he was so in love with Jesus. He was pursuing Jesus. He was believing in Jesus. He was walking in that knowledge. People say, well, he was, he was in jail. He was in heaven. I've got a rented place. I've got armed security. 24-7. People are coming to me. Get, get a hold of this. He was cutting through thick brush. He was seeing this. He was, Paul was like an advance party for the gospel of Jesus. I want to tell you today, what's your calling? Or I want to ask you, what's your calling? What are you advancing for? Are you just trying to get by? I'm going to say, God bless you, and God help you, and God wake you up, and give you eyes to see, and ears to hear. He tells the Jewish people this, and later on, in the next few verses. Let's just go over here in verse 26. So you can go into this people and say, Hearing you shall hear and shall not understand. And seeing you shall not see and not perceive. He's talking to the Jewish people about accepting Jesus as the anointed of God and how he is being sent to the Gentiles to bring the Gentiles all into the kingdom of God. So that God, in Ephesians chapter 2, he said that God in Christ can make one of two one new man. He can take two people, Jews and Christians, or Jews and Gentiles, and make a Christian. No color, no social Stigma, strata, the breakthrough through the blood of Christ. He has made of two different belief systems one new person. I want to tell you today, you need to be able to explain that. You need to be able to explain your Christianity. You're going to be challenged in coming days, in coming weeks. Why are you a Christian? You're a bigot. It talks, there, there's already things out there in the works that will try to make Christianity illegal. That will try to make preaching the gospel illegal. It will try to make the good news illegal. It will say we're prejudiced, we're biased, we're bigots. Let me tell you right now, I am prejudiced against people going to hell. I am biased towards people going to hell. I am totally... Uh, Firm in my beliefs that the Word of God works all the time. The Word of God doesn't work just to get you out of trouble. The Word of God works to keep you from trouble. The Word of God works to keep you in victory, to keep you walking in victory, and to let your light so shine among men so that when people see you, they see Him. That's what the Apostle Paul, he goes, Hearing you'll hear, shall not understand. Seeing you shall see and not perceive. There's so many ways we could take that on the Word of God. Poor people hear the message of tithe and offering and not get it and stay poor. I really believe sick people hear the message of by His stripes ye are healed. And hear it, but not really hear it. Go to the next verse. Verse 27. For the heart of this people is wax gross. Their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes have they closed. These are religious people. They wear the robes, they wear the headdress, they wear the garments of religion. The heart of this people is wax gross, their ears are dull of hearing. Can you switch that to the amplified version? <clears throat> I don't, not, peop, not many people know what happens when the ears wax gross. <laughs> Somebody looks to the ear, oh gross, that's not really it. 
For the heart, the understanding, the soul of the people has grown dull, stupid, hardened, and callous. The ears are heavy and hard of hearing, and they have shut tight their eyes so they may not perceive and have knowledge and become acquainted with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their souls and turn to me. Next verse. Turn to me and be. So let it be understood by you then that this message of the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles and they will listen to it. You want to know when Paul ministered the letters and a lot of them were, were Gentile people that heard the message? You want to know why there's not so much in there about uh, sickness and people being healed, things like that? They just believed the good news message and walked in it. They walked in the goodness of God. They walked in the joy of the Lord. And, and part of the canonization of Scripture, one of the five tenets of the canonization of Scripture is five things has to be met. So when they, when they put the Bible together, uh, these, these five things had to be met so that it <clears throat> could verify and authenticate it so it was proved. One of the ones that I like most of all, or, or two of them, uh, one, it had to be read in the churches. Well, it's called Paul's letters. They literally just read them in church in an assembly to a group of people. They read it's, it's Paul's letter to the Corinthians, uh, his letter to the Ephesians. Had, had to be read in the churches so that word was out. This is what was read. The second one was it had to bear proof of its own authenticity. It was written as the Word of God inspired by the Holy Ghost. So when they read the word or Paul wrote the word, literally when people would get up and they would just read, it would be like me just reading verses in church. People got saved, healed, delivered from demons. This is what the historians say. People got saved. They got filled with the Holy Ghost. They got delivered from demons. Miracles took place while he was reading the word. Why? Because it was God through human voice. What you're hearing today when I read these words it's God through human voice, not, not me, not David Leggett. It's the word, when I read the Bible, it's the words of God. Any, any mistakes is on me, but any reality is God. Any, any power is God. I see this today. I see this advanced party preparing the way for the success of the gospel. I'm in Rome. You're in jail, but I'm in Rome where he wants me. I stayed there for two years. He stayed there for two years preaching the gospel, preaching, getting it out. More believers, more believers. He was in Rome. Historians say, Charlie, at the time of the writing, there were approximately four million people in Rome. Steady stream. Steady stream. Rome has been the center of religion for Centuries now. Who came? Who came to visit him? I'm getting, I'm getting close to, to stopping, although you don't have to go to work tomorrow, so I could linger. <clears throat> uh, one of the things I found interesting, you just say, well, who was recording all this? Paul wasn't writing this. Luke was writing it. Luke was on the ship with him. Luke was there. Another young guy came to visit him too while he was in jail. Uh, Tim, Timothy, you know, the first and second Timothy, Timothy. Other people that came and ministered to him. Epaphus, Epaphroditus. A lot of these people. Tromphius, Tremenius. They came and ministered to Paul. The Philippian church sent financial aid to him. That's why he talks about their supply of the Spirit. In Philippians 4.19, when Paul says, For my God shall supply all of your need, because they were ministering to him. My God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus the Lord. 
these people came and they heard the word of God and they Paul Paul didn't have a job but his needs were met for two years while he was chained up God knows how to meet your needs no matter the situation God knows how to use you. You may say, well, I'm just not in the place for God to use me. Shut up. What are you, what are you waiting for? So you can be like Jesus? Just start doing something for Him and you'll be like Him. See, Pastor, do you feel like Jesus? There's a lot of days I don't feel like Jesus. She really wants to say that some days he don't act like Jesus. <laughs> and, and there's some days she don't act like Jesus said either. But <laughs> <laughs> but we still work for the Lord. We can't, we, we can't have a bad day and take a day off. Come on. You, you can't. You can't say, well, I, I messed up. i got to wait till I get right with God. No, no, you got to stop the foolishness. That's the devil talking to you. You keep working for God, and you'll start putting distance between your mess-ups because you've been stepping up. And the more you step up, the less mess-ups you'll have. When you feel like you can't do anything, you realize you're still chained, but there's somebody knocking at the door. Listen to what it, listen to what it says two different times. Verse 23, you like these glasses? It helps me see. <laughs> when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him in his lodging, to whom he expounded, that means he talked word by word, and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. Verse 24, here's, here's the deal. And some believe the things which were spoken, and some believe not. Some will believe you, some won't. Big deal. You go for the ones that believe you. Let's go over to verse, uh, the last verse, verse 31. Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things concerning the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence no man forbidding him. Listen, don't tell your sad sack story when you can preach Jesus. Because there's a cross and a tomb. Both are empty. Come on. When you can talk about Jesus from the Word of God, you go back to the book of Genesis and start. Where it said, you know, Satan tripped up Adam and Eve. Oh, he was rejoicing until the Word of God came forth. You have bruised her heel, but one day the seed of the woman shall bruise your head. That's talking about Jesus. That, that takes us clear over to Romans chapter 16 where it said, And the God of peace shall soon bruise Satan under your heels shortly. Woo, glory to God. He was preaching those things. He was preaching the kingdom of God. Romans 14, 17, he's talking about the kingdom of God. It's not religion. It's not meat and drink. That's what they were, you know, they were fussing between the Gentiles and the Jewish people. And I know I'm talking fast because I'm trying to say what I want to say before I get too tripped up and start speaking in tongues over it. Right. <clears throat> I don't want to get caught up in this religious thing. He said the kingdom of God is righteousness, standing up straight. Right standing, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Remember, Paul goes before a king as a prisoner with an execution hanging over his head. And he said, I think myself happy, O King Agrippa. Woo! Praise God. You get up in the morning. And the devil said, man, you're feeling bad. You're not, you, you can't do nothing. You got everything against you. The bills are stacking up. When your feet hit the floor, it goes, yep, but I think I'm happy. And I know Jesus. 
And it's a Nehemiah 8.10 kind of day. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah to God. It's the joy. You know you feel, but you know you want to be depressed. You know you're down. You know you can't do anything. You know this one don't like you. You know that one's talking to you. But the joy of the Lord is my strength. I've been redeemed. I've been born again. He gave me a new name. Wrote it down in glory. Calls me by my name. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Set me apart. Put a heavenly, holy calling on me to preach the gospel and I can get the job done because i got Holy Ghost power on the inside of me. On a bad day, still looks bad for the devil. Why? Why? Because it's he that is in me that's greater than he that's in the world. I'm just the vessel. I'm just the carrier. I'm the house. I'm the vehicle. It's he that is in me that's greater than he that is in the world. That'll get the job done every time in Jesus' name. Would you stand with me? Glory, glory, glory.